Ahlan Biko. Have you ever heard of hot and tangy yogurt sauces? Neither had I until friends insisted that I give Kusa Bil Laban a try. It's this unique blend of courgette stuffed with an amazing spice mincemeat filling cooked in a tangy yogurt sauce that makes any bit of rice luscious and rich. Salma and I couldn't wait to get our hands on this recipe and we're so excited to share it with you. To start off, we're going to make this mouthwatering mincemeat stuffing, which is incredibly juicy and packed full of pine nuts and parsley. Place a medium pan on the stove and add in some butter, then turn the heat to medium high. Once it has melted, add some pine nuts into the pan and constantly stir for about 3-4 to four minutes until golden brown. Remove the pine nuts and let them drain on a paper towel lined plate. Into the same pan you'll then add some minced lamb and press that flat to get maximum surface contact. Cook this for about 2 minutes on the first side and then once it has browned you can break it up into pieces and flip them over to start cooking on the second side. You'll then start breaking the meat up using your utensil, and the goal is to have medium sized chunks of meat. You can then add in the seasonings, which are some salt and black pepper, and then some Lebanese 7 spice or baharat, which is a blend of warm tasting spices, followed by allspice and some ground cardamom. The last spice is a good amount of freshly ground nutmeg, and once you've added that, you can mix it all in. At this point, the pan will smell amazing. And next up, we're going to add in some onions that were diced to a medium size. As these cook down, they'll make the meat super juicy and give it a great texture. After mixing them with the meat, turn the heat to medium, add a few spoonfuls of water to the pan and then cover it with the lid so the onions can steam. Give them about 5 minutes and they should be soft and completely wilted. I couldn't help myself here, the smell was just too good and I had to sneak a bite. And yeah, this is crazy juicy and flavourful and it's not even done yet. Let it cool for 15 minutes or so, then you'll add the fried pine nuts, saving some for garnish, as well as a handful of parsley leaves which you should chop to a fine size. Mix those in and you've now got one of the most delicious meat fillings you'll ever try. I reckon you can make an also vegetarian version of this too with some fake meat or finely diced mushrooms. Now that we've got the meat done, let me teach you how to stuff these courgettes Arab style. These are a smaller variety of courgettes that you'll mostly see in Arab, Turkish or South Asian grocery stores. If you can't get these ones, just choose the smallest ones you can find. And to prep them, you'll carefully cut off the small brown stem on the bottom of the courgettes, trying to peel it off while leaving all of the surrounding green intact. Once you've done that, you need to remove the flower or tip of the courgette. Cut it just below where it starts and then you'll have easy access to the inside. You'll then grab a vegetable corer and start using it to hollow out the vegetable. The easiest way to do this is to remove a shallow cone of the filling from the middle by poking it from a few angles until a small plug comes out. Once you've done that, you can hollow out the rest of the inside using the corer. You'll just need to be careful that you don't go too deep and end up poking through to the other side. You can place the cora alongside the vegetable and use your thumb as a depth setter so that you can only core it as deep as your thumb allows you. Then you'll just rotate the courgette on the cora and remove any of the flesh and do that until you have hollowed out the courgette like so. If it's your first time hollowing out vegetables, get a couple of extra for practice so you're not puncturing the ones you'll be serving to your guests. You'll also end up with loads of courgette flesh that was removed. Don't throw that away. They're perfect for adding into a soup or pasta sauce so freeze them for later. Now those hollowed out courgettes are almost ready for stuffing, you just need to give them a quick wash under the tap which will loosen any bits that were left inside. By the way, here are my cord ones compared to Selma's. Hers are a lot neater with more of the core left inside, whereas mine are a bit uglier but that's okay. If you can get yours closer to hers, then you're going to have the perfect filling to courgette ratio. After washing them, let the water drain from the courgettes and then you can start stuffing them with the filling. To do that, you want to use your hands to slowly push the filling into each courgette. And it's easy if you've got delicate fingers, but you'll likely need to use the back of a wooden spoon to push the filling in. You want to fill it up so that the inside is packed with the filling but not super compressed. Just apply a bit of pressure when you're filling them up to get it right to the back. Then keep filling them until you get to just before the rim. You'll want to leave a small gap here so the meat doesn't fall out. Once all the courgettes are stuffed, give them a quick clean up with a paper towel and wipe off any stray pieces of filling that have stuck to them. Here's where the magic begins. You'll place any size of frying pan on the stove over medium high heat and add in about 1cm of vegetable oil. We're going to fry the courgettes, so once that has heated, add in a batch of the courgettes to fill the pan and let them fry for 2-3 to three minutes. We're looking for a beautiful golden brown colour on the first side, so once that shows, turn them over and brown them on the other side as well. Do this about 3-4 to four times until you have even browning all over. You're aiming for a light to medium browning like this one, then just take them out of the oil to drain and fry the next batch. And now the most important part of the recipe, the secret sauce. As it's a yogurt sauce, you'll add a large amount of yogurt as the main ingredient. Compared to most European yogurts, Middle Eastern yogurts are really sour and tangy. So let's up the sourness by adding a good amount of Turkish ayran, which itself is a sour yogurt drink that fingers crossed you'll find at Turkish or Arab stores. If you can't find it, you can use kefir instead, but because it's so thick, you'd need to dilute it with water until it's similar to ayran in texture. 
Once your choice of liquid has been added, you'll follow that up with a bit of salt and then a small amount of cornstarch, which will help homogenize and stabilize the sauce. And now you blend it together. I'm using a stick blender, but a regular one also works, and you'll blend it enough so that there are no lumps of yogurt or starch left in the bowl. When you're happy with it, you'll place a large pot on the stove and place a strainer over the top, into which you'll pour the sauce to catch any remaining clumps. Now grab a whisk and turn the heat to medium high, and you'll start whisking for about 15 minutes. This will be your workout for the day, as you need to whisk non-stop so the sauce doesn't split or burn. After 15 minutes, the sauce should be at a light boil with bubbles floating to the top, and that means the workout is complete. You can now stop whisking and turn the heat to medium. Add in minced garlic and dried mint, then mix until fully incorporated. Now you'll have this incredible sauce that you'll want to drink straight from a glass. Before adding the courgettes, check the texture of the sauce and add a little water if you need to thin it out. We like it to have the same consistency as iron, so we thinned it out a little. After that, you should carefully place the courgettes into the pot and you'll let them cook in the sauce for about 15 minutes. While they're simmering, let's make the number one Middle Eastern rice dish, vermicelli rice, which is perfect for soaking up saucy dishes. Start off by washing some medium grain rice. This is cow rose rice, and I wash it three times to get rid of as much starch as possible. Set that aside and place a medium pot on the stove. Add in a knob of butter and a splash of vegetable oil over medium high heat. Once the butter has melted, add in the vermicelli and fry it for four minutes, stirring constantly. This frying will give it a nutty flavor and a beautiful golden color. When it looks like this, you'll add in the washed rice and continue frying for about two more minutes. At this point, you're supposed to add in salt and pepper. I forgot those until later. And you also add in the liquid. I recommend using stock instead of water to make the rice extra flavorful and fill it until you cover the rice by about two centimeters. Turn the heat to high and cover the pot and then let this boil for two to three minutes. When that time is up, the water will have disappeared below the level of the rice, and this is when I remembered my salt and pepper. You need to turn the heat down to very low and cover the pot to allow the rice to steam. Set the timer for 20 minutes, and when the time is up, you should have perfectly cooked vermicelli rice. This rice is going to be perfect for the delicious yogurt sauce, and it's my favorite way of making rice for any meal. Right about now, the courgettes should also be ready. Check on them by poking them with a fork, and if they're soft and cooked through, then you're good to go. You can serve this family style dishing up just the courgettes and garnishing them, or dish up the courgettes on a pile of hot steamy rice and spoon over plenty of that delicious yogurt sauce. Garnish this with dried mint and pine nuts, then dig in and enjoy. Mm. This is really, really good. I totally get why this is a childhood favorite. It is just so comforting, so warm. And that sour flavor, fantastic. I love it. If you enjoyed that and you want to see more childhood favorites, check out this video over here.